Jesus' mighty name. The cross is God's solution. The cross is the great divide between the two creations of God. It's the access route into the reality of the new creation. Everything that is of the old creation that intends to feature in the new creation must pass through the cross. And anything that has not passed through the cross is not useful to God because it has not been quickened by the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection is the operating system that drives the new creation. Service to God that is not on the basis of the power of resurrection is not accepted. When we serve God on the strength of the power of our humanity, it doesn't strike any chord in eternity because the tools that were used are not tools that God has approved of. And so the cross is where Satan was defeated. The cross is where an end came and a beginning began. Redemption is a story of how that death is not the end, but death can be a beginning. And it's only the resurrection and the life that can tell that story accurately. What happened in the Red Sea was the death test. Egypt was chasing Israel. There's only one way to know who has eternal life. Let's all go into death. And when they passed through death, there was a divide. Egypt was swallowed. Israel revived. And that's how it's going to be when time is accomplished. The difference between life and death will be the cross. The Lord give us understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. On the cross, there are two things we need to understand. In order to secure our forgiveness, we had to be nailed to the cross. But in order to experience deliverance from the power of sin, the cross must be born in us daily. So, Jesus is our substitute on the cross for our forgiveness. I'll explain that. He's our substitute on the cross for our forgiveness. And he's our substitute within for our deliverance. And I'll show you how it works. So that you will, the first victory you will experience, if you are serious, is victory from sin. From the from the first victory. But there's another victory that is more gallant than victory from sin. That one is the reason why we can be 22 years in the Lord, 27 years in the Lord. But we don't quite like feel as if we're in peace with with the Holy Ghost. He will not only deliver us from sin, he will deliver us from ourselves so that we don't live for ourselves. Now that's the aspect of the deliverance that is deeper than experiencing deliverance from sin. We will look into it critically and we'll take our time to concentrate on the details so that we'll know how it works out. God helping us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, yesterday, we were trying to do something. Don't forget that. It's a substitute on the cross for our forgiveness. And it's a substitute within for our deliverance. And that's the reason why we need to bear the cross every day. Because every time God speaks, He's speaking. Are you with me? 
I love this equation. Never seen this before. The speakings of God sustains this mood. Everything that is spoken from the spirit is contrary to the flesh. Like God says, go empty your bank account and give what you have as an offering. It is sweet to the spirit. But the flesh doesn't like it. Now, sometimes you might even lose your peace because the spirit is grieved. And then when you go and obey, then the spirit receives ventilation. It's happening. Are you with me? And so when the word comes from the spirit, the perspective of the soul will stand contrary to that word. And that's why we need to bear the cross within. The cross wants to ensure that the soul and the sinful aspect, the suggestions coming from this realm, does not stop you from obeying the instructions from that realm. And that's the basis of consistent deliverance from the power of sin. Anytime the spirit comes up and reveals a perspective, the soul comes and reveals a counter perspective. And in the new creation, we said that the difference between the old and the new is the cross, which is the great, great divide. Are you still with me? So you always be faced with the choice of either choosing life or choosing the tree of the knowledge of good and evil every time. So when we talk about perfection, we are talking about those people that have mastered the act of always choosing the spirit. Always. That's what perfection is all about. And I need to say something. It doesn't matter how much you were involved in sin before you gave your life to Christ. Maybe you lost your womb. Maybe so many terrible things happened to you. Maybe you are HIV positive. That's not the issue. Forget about your crisis. Whenever a man comes into Christ, the plans that God has for that man is a good plan. Let's start from that point. But you see, the problem is the average believer is not patient enough to come under the authority of God in order to realize that plan. Now, before the person lost the womb, he took a process. A process of numerous assortment of activities. Don't you think that in the recovery process, it will take a process? You know, <laughs> an evangelist can come to town and tell you that it is done now. He will not stay. He will go. We are the ones on ground that will dwell with you when he has left. And so we can't lie. <laughs> That's the body because we are on ground. If you prophesy and it doesn't come to pass, we are here. So before you talk, you check it first. Because if it doesn't come to pass, the people will come and say, bro, you, there was. There is a process. In bringing you into that beautiful destiny that God has carved out for you. But you will make choices. See, God is, God is a just God. Now, in this process, the Spirit of God now begins to bring some requirements. In order for him to move your life into another season. And I hope you understand that seasons open when we respond in obedience to God. That is the... <laughs> that's how the platform of Christ is. As you obey, other things open. So, obedience is a trigger that opens other dimensions, other doors, other seasons, other levels other realities. Now, you can remain a disobedient Christian and remain on one level for 35 years. Because every time the conflict between the spirit and the soul arises, you normally feel you are more comfortable with the perspective that comes from the soul. And there will be nothing that God can do about that because it is your choice. You have decided your line of development. Even though you are in Christ, you feel more comfortable walking after the flesh. So, you are sowing into the flesh. You are pampering it. The Bible reveals that what you will reap 
from that kind of deliberate venture is that you are going to reap death. And death in that context refers to separation from God. You'll be operating without God's input, operating without God's presence, operating without God's backing. Meanwhile, you are born again. You can travel, you can die anytime because you, don't, you are not under God's covering. You are not going where he's sending you to go. You are going where you want to go. That means you will take responsibility for the consequences of your actions. Hallelujah. Now, so the cross must be held within. And the reason why the cross must be held within is because you must choose life. God said, I place before you blessing and cursing. You have to choose. Are you with me? Now, I need to say this. There's a difference between operating in the kingdom of God and operating in the kingdom of heaven. According to the book of John, the kingdom of God talks about the sphere of the divine life. There is a realm of life that God operates in. Are you with me? When you give your life to Christ, you are part of that sphere. Are you with me? Now, that sphere, when you become part of it, a time comes when your spirit senses are activated. And then you begin to sustain the sense of the inner life. You begin to know when God wants you to do something and when he doesn't want you to do something. Okay? Now, if you are going to be operating directly from the third heavens, receiving instructions from that point, and implementing the things you are receiving here, when your senses in the inner life are activated, you begin to sense the will of God. Are you with me? When you decide that you are going to leave, you make a choice that you will live within the context and the frame of the will of God, you are operating on a different plane from that point. You are operating from the third heavens. You are operating from the kingdom of the heavens. Now, the difference between the guy operating from the kingdom of God, he is born again, but he doesn't necessarily want to live within the context of the will of God. He has other issues. He has an agenda that is contrary to the agenda of God. Now that guy is li living on a particular plane. There are possibilities that are bound to him. There are circumstances that are available to him on the account of his disposition. Now the guy that decides to go further he has decided to choose the Lord's choices so that he will live within the framework of the will of God for his life. Such a personality is living from another plane. It is that kind of personality that is living from the third heavens, living from the instructions, from the perceptions that come from the throne of God. Is such a personality that God reveals the content of his kingdom too. Now, so this guy here, he's born again. But he doesn't want to live for God. He has his own perspective contrary to God. In fact, if you are careful, for those of us that are careful, you will discover that modern day preaching actually creates a scenario not such that people will live only in the kingdom of God and not in the kingdom of heaven. Check the scope of modern day preaching. The scope of modern day preaching is within the context of new creation realities, not the context of new creation responsibilities. And so the guy doesn't get to function within the sphere of God's will, the sphere of God's intent. That doesn't become the model of operation for the average believer upon the face of the earth. And so our corporate strength within cities and nations is little. So little that it cannot stand against the wiles and the stratagems of the kingdom of darkness. Now there must be a change of orientation. 
especially among we young ones, we must understand where God is headed and we must be ready to lay down our lives to see that we grasp what is offering. Hallelujah. That disposition will require that will be a bit radical. Not just with the devil, but a radical, radical to, a, to see to it that we do not live from the standpoint of the soul. Or we live from the standpoint of the spirit. And every time you respond that way, there is always a sacrifice that is made. You are going to be dying deliberately to the perspectives of the soul. That's why the Bible calls you a living sacrifice. You'll be dying and you'll be aware that you are dying. Not physical death as it were, but dying to the disposition of the soul. The soul will always come into context, into contention with the spirit. But you make up your mind that this one will die daily. In the office, then I'm bring a proposal for bribe. That's when you discover that the alignment of your right shoe has gone out of place. So that when you walk, you walk as if you are bow legged Because the alignment this side and the alignment this side has been compromised. And now there is a bribe, there is a proposal for bribe. Your soul as a man. When you check also, the last time you used your ATM, the machine swallowed it. <laughs> My God. <laughs> you have to swear an affidavit in the court to retrieve it. In fact, you decided to leave it there because why, why are you retrieving it in the first place? And then there's a proposal. At that point in time, you just discovered that the clock, the rent clock began to tick. And the point that it had reached was not a good point. It was not in your favor. And then there's a proposal. The soul comes with cogent reasons how that you need to yield. Humanity comes with a self-centered perspective. And that's why the cross must be born within. A choice stands before you. Will you go ahead with spirit life? Because the constitution of the kingdom of heaven requires that we function in rightness with the principles of God. And that's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? And its rightness. There are laws in that kingdom. There's a perspective in that kingdom. I said when I went to Dubai, I didn't see any woman. Because all the women were indoors. The law was that women should not show until night time. So if you, if you want to see a Dubai woman, it will be in the night. That's the law. It doesn't mean that they cut their legs. Some of them can still come out in the daytime, but it's not consistent. They are not right with the law. Every kingdom has its laws. And if you are going to be a good citizen of that kingdom, you need to be right with what? The law. So the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And what? And try to be right with the laws of that kingdom. If you do so, if you live so, if that becomes your culture and your constitution, the things that the Gentiles seek will navigate in your direction, such as you need to fulfill your divine purpose. But if you decide to seek the things that the Gentiles seek, mammon will possess your soul and give you a different philosophy. The first law, how many of you still remember when I taught on the laws that governs the spirit realm? The first law that governs that realm is anything whatsoever any personality whatsoever that you decide to yield yourself to be a servant unto indeed you become a servant of such there is a realm to which a man smokes cigarette he becomes his own becomes spiritual there is oh yeah I, I know i'm all by myself now the lord will help us in jesus name are you with me there is a, le a level to which you get involved with chasing women. Then it comes to a point where your own becomes spiritual. Why? Because the devil helps you so that you become a slave of that pursuit. There's a time where it becomes it's spiritually aided. Are you with me? For instance, if a man says he's following women and then it comes to a point that is pregnant women that he's looking for. He closes from work by 6 p.m. He's driving 
through Abuja looking for a pregnant woman. And he beheld the woman heavily on that day, on that pregnancy. I said, wow, you look good. The woman now said, can't you see what? He said, no, you are just right. You are so okay, man. <laughs> now, at that point, his pursuit has gone beyond reason. It is supernatural, it's spiritual. Why? Because he has decided to yield himself as a servant of fornication and adultery. And the devil saw his initiative. That his initiative was a bogus one. And decided to give him assistance with spirits that will enlarge the appetite of immorality on that level. To a, to a dimension that was far beyond the syllabus that he intended to accomplish before he started. Are you with me? Yes, a time comes when a man begins to look for a 12 year old virgin. I mean, a, a, a man of 56 years old is driving around town looking for a 12 year old. You know, at that point, um, his pursuit has been aided. In the same way, if you decide to yield yourself to walking by the Spirit, your pursuit will be aided. Are you with me? The spirit of God will aid your pursuit. He will aid your inclination. So much so that a time will come, it will become very easy for you to obey God. Very easy for you to empty your bank account. Very easy for you to respond to the spirit of God when he begins to call you to the place of prayer. Very easy for you to stand out. You have not slept for three days, but he's still calling you. Easy for you to yield and to respond. It means at that point, your journey has been aided. Now, so when we talk about perfection and working perpetually within the context of spirit life, it is not on the resources of our humanity. God is going to aid you. If it is true that you have decided by an act of your will that you choose the choices of the Lord, and you are doing it in pain and in weeping. A time comes when God decides to aid you. Where you can really tell the story and say it is not by power, it's not by might anymore. I'm just basking in a reality. Older than time, I'm basking in a wisdom. Older than the devil, I'm basking in a reality that was factored in the spirit realm even before I was born something beyond your mind something beyond your ability to plan is initiated and your life becomes a testimony of the fact that the grace of god is still as potent as it was in the days of the apostles if women go naked in this city as a new fashion some people will still be operating in blazing holiness now not because they are not in that city it's because they have found they are aided I've seen some smokers that are aided in smoking. Amen. Are you with me? So we have a substitute on the cross. That substitute on that cross, because it was on the cross, there was blood that flowed. The strength of that blood that flowed, forgiveness, it's a possibility. And I needed to know that even as we march in the realm of the spirit we still commit blunders many times we still commit blunders and that's why the blood still needs to be there to help us all right we still commit blunders and those blunders are sins like one time i was on the pulpit preaching it happens many times not even one time and he wants me to do something and i was now waiting then i now forgot it was when I was now leaving the pulpit and I remember. If I had obeyed, you know, we learn about, and he was grieved. He was grieved that I, 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 I abandoned his, his leading. Now, that was a sin. Are you with me? So I had to plead with him, taking advantage of the blood of Jesus, and I was made right again. Now, you see, it is not as if a believer that is even mature doesn't make mistakes and sin sometimes. But the point is this, he's not operating under the power of sin. 
Now, the guy that is operating under the power of sin, the power of sin is stronger than his will, his ability to choose. He chooses that I want to stop smoking. He cannot stop. That's, he's held up what? Under the power. That's different. Jesus was sinless. We, our destiny is to be free from sin so that we can be alive to God. But just in case you make a mistake, which you did not plan to make, but you just made a mistake, you can receive the blood of Jesus Christ and get yourself back. You understand that? And then you begin to discover that as you advance in the spirit, the areas where you made mistakes yesterday, you'll not be making those mistakes today. And then perfection, the part of the just, is like what? A shining light that shines at what? More and more. Now, there's an extent to which you walk with God too. And it becomes clear what God called you to do. You just begin to operate exactly what was written in the script concerning you. It becomes more brilliant. The illumination becomes stronger. The, the, the ability to touch lives becomes deeper. Your sword pierces deeper. Your, your sword can cut sharper. Everywhere you appear, there is an impression, an impact that is left upon the lives of people. Just because you have advanced on that path to a level and some level of illumination oozes out of your existence. Now, Christianity must come into the front burner again. Not religion and all of that. And the truth of the matter is, if you don't know Jesus personally, you cannot preach him. It's easy to preach principles. You pick the scriptures and say, principles. Easy to teach it because it's intellectual. You can, it's cognitive. You can, it's structural. You can make sense out of principles. But it's difficult to preach Christ if you don't know him. You are given a personality. Talking about his spirit. How that spirit operates. If you don't have experience of how it operates, even your eyes will be closed to seeing those realities in the scripture. Now, somebody said, came to my study room and saw my computers filled with Bible study software, e-sword, power Bible, all kinds of stuff. He said, yes, I found out the secret how, why you teach the way you do. So I said, no problem. The person now brought his system. I uploaded all kinds of softwares and the person became confused. More confused than he was before. Because his understanding is that I'm doing so much of study. That's how I'm. If you walk with Jesus, it, it's, it's easy to talk about him. Now, just like if you want to tell a story about yourself, you can... You can just keep talking because you know this you. You know what you did when you were under pressure. You know what you, the times you felt. You know, if you walk, just walk with Jesus. It's not about the message. A prepared man is better than a prepared message. Yes, now, so let's continue from where we stop. We'll uh, dwell on this emphasis critically so that we can make progress. Hallelujah. Just digging into the scriptures like that. If we don't have that opportunity, then there's no hope. Digging into the scriptures and bringing the perspective of God so that you can be enlarged, you can understand the truth. And when people come with lying stuff, because there's a lot of that now, you'll be able to identify it. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So yesterday we began a process on the path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. And we said that the first point on the part of spiritual progress is the point of what? The knowing of revelation. Somebody say that with me. The knowing of revelation. I didn't hear you. The knowing of revelation. Now we are doing this so that you can be delivered from the storm going on out there. So much, so many things going on, teachings and all of that. We are just trying to set the apostolic pillars so that the quality of our Christian life, our focus and our perspective, our vision and our goal will be consistent with the goal and the vision of the first witnesses. God helping us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, so we saw that the first point on the path of spiritual progress is the knowing of revelation. The knowing of revelation. And I stopped in... Colossians chapter 3. Uh, Colossians, please turn. Colossians chapter 3. 
Please turn your Bible. Now I want us to do some reading. If you give me some time, I will, we can finish the knowing of Revelation in this morning session. If you give me some time. Very critical. Please help me tell your neighbor that not all that is supernatural is spectacular. Now, Christianity is supernatural. For instance, there are many of us here that can pray for 10 hours in tongues, straight. You cannot do that with human power. That's supernatural. But you see, when Paul was on his way to Damascus, the Bible revealed that he saw a light, an illumination, and he heard a voice. And that is spectacular. You can live your Christian life to maturity without experiencing anything spectacular. Do not seek for the spectacular, only seek for the supernatural. If God decides to give you something spectacular, praise him for it. But you can live your Christian life to maturity just by understanding how to relate with the supernatural. For instance, there was a time I was praying, it happened only once. A part of my wall in my room began to emit light for 25 minutes. I believe God just did that for me to know that he was with me. He wanted me to know that he was with me. Now that may not happen to you. That's spectacular. And that's why those kind of spectacular stuff don't happen often. But supernatural things are supposed to be your daily experiences. And I'm going to show you the difference between the supernatural and the spectacular. Now, the average believer comes to church expecting the spectacular. But you see, we are supernatural people. What is common with us is the supernatural. God might decide to do the spectacular when he wants to do it. That's his own business. We do not seek experiences just for experience sake. We seek God. And God decides how he reveals himself to us. I know some guys like that that seek to see angels. They want to see cherubims and all kinds of... You are on another pedestal. Because the truth of the matter is this, the part of spiritual progress opens up by our deliberate intention to know Christ and to serve his will. So you are now trying to know angels. Somebody like that went on a fast for 77 days. He claimed to, see, to have encountered an angel and came back from the mountain with some tonguish writings seeking interpretation that that was the confinement of his destiny. We didn't, we didn't see him on the grid anymore. God give you understanding. And so there's this craze for the spectacular, but the Christian faith is a, is a corridor, a pavilion for the supernatural. And we must separate the two so that we can understand how to walk with God. In the book of Colossians chapter 3 from verse 5, the Bible says, Motify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil consequence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For with things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. Hallelujah. Now, can we jump? Okay, but now, let's just go. He also put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off what? The old man which is deeds. And have put on the new man. And you see, this new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now, I want you to underline knowledge if your Bible is not borrowed. So yesterday we saw that our old man, the life that empowers the soul to furnish us with the consciousness of our person, of me, that life has been crucified. And the reason for that is so that the soul can come into alignment with the spirit. And become a messenger that we receive from the spirit and transmit to the body. 
by reason of the crucifixion of the life of the soul, it is now possible for us to decide not to walk by the soul. But it's going to be dependent upon our decision. Either to activate the perspective of the soul or to activate the perspective of the spirit. We said yesterday that the soul and the body are tied together in a covenant such that if we live for the soul, sin is going to be activated. Indwelling sin in our body will become a factor. Hallelujah. Because our perspective is self-centered, then sin is going to be empowered. The root of sin is self. Meanwhile, the God life that is in our spirit gives us consciousness of the dimensions of God. And God is expecting that we should yield to the Spirit so that we can have access to the dimensions that the God life is bringing our consciousness into. Now the Bible reveals that if we are going to operate within the context of the new man, that the new man is renewed or the new man receives ventilation, the new man receives strength, the new man receives vigor when we receive knowledge of him now it takes a knowledge and this knowledge is not a knowledge that we can read about it's not a knowledge that we can acquire in a lecture not a knowledge that we can acquire even in bible study it's a knowledge that comes knowledge that can only be acquired because it was handed out it is revealed are you with me oh you're not here now for instance that when you gave your life to christ there was a need for a knowledge because there was nothing physical that suggested that you were born again and there was a knowledge that was required for you to be in the constant know of the fact that what has taken place in your life is consistent and so the bible reveals that the spirit of god beareth witness with our spirit that we are sons of god now that witness that he bears imparts upon us a knowledge a knowledge that is an integral part of our work with god a knowledge that is transmitted into the very core of our being so much so that they can steal your clothes from the line they can take your shoes from the rack they can take your money from the bank and divert it but there's something nobody can take away and that's the knowledge that has been witnessed into your spirit by the holy ghost now the part of spiritual progress is a part that is fundamentally driven by this kind of knowledge now the bible says that in this new man and the new man of which he speaks is Christ. In Christ Jesus. We are empowered to work with Christ when we get this knowledge. When we have access to this kind of knowledge. This knowledge is the epignosis of God. It's a revealed knowledge of Christ. It's a knowledge that is revealed. Knowledge that comes through intercourse with the Spirit of God. If you are still with me, say Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can be studying your Bible and the Holy Ghost takes over. And then he takes you into the epignosis. Begins to reveal to you the knowledge that can only be revealed by the Spirit of Christ. Are you here? Now I need to show you some biblical examples of people that contacted this kind of knowledge and what it does to them. So that you know that the extent to which we can advance in, in spiritual things is dependent on the knowing of revelation an example the corinthian church was a church that was noted for the manifestations of the supernatural the spirit of god in their midst it was a church that was identified for his advanced knowledge in the dispensing of the gifts of the spirit hallelujah but in that same church there were reports of all kinds of sin all kinds of iniquity so much so that there was a member of that church that had invented a new style of fornication that member of the church was actually in sexual dealings with his father's wife and so there were mighty gifts of the spirit but yet there was like a contradiction and so when 
You know, such a church, people will not want to join it. When they are coming out of church, the unbelievers outside will begin to appoint the members of the church that have been in serious fornication in the club. Meanwhile, they come and say, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. But there's a contradiction. A contradiction that is not just known in-house, but the guys outside are also aware of that contradiction. And then when they come to church, they say, yeah, we are here. Now, but the contradiction was so obvious that the, the name of Christ was blasphemed among the nations. And when Paul diagnosed their condition, he saw that they were actually believed of a knowing, a revelation. Now, let me tell you something. Every time there is, there is, there is lack of growth, lack of spiritual advancement, it is because that person is shut off one additional knowing of revelation. Now, so, Paul recommended to the Corinthian church that if you guys are going to go beyond this state, there is a knowing that must come to you. And that was what he spoke about in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. He said, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the living God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, you see, you have just received that scripture in your mind. That one keys. That's the letter. He's saying that you guys need a revelation of what it means for the Holy Ghost to dwell in you. If you don't have that revelation, there is no way you can live above the sins of the body. Now, so when somebody is lacking the revelation of the fact that Christ dwells within him, one of the signs that shows is that he violates his body. He uses his body outside the context of the government of God. Now, in salvation, when something happens inside, we can confirm it outside. The proof over time that a man is saved is that we begin to see the fruit of the Spirit come out. The proof that the man is filled with the Holy Ghost is that he speaks in tongues. Are you with me? For every knowing you receive, there is a, there is a commensurate effect that takes place in your lifestyle. Every knowing. When you see a man operating in signs and wonders, there is a knowing. It's linked to a knowing. If you are not operating in it, you lack a knowing. And this knowing, I can't, even if I call you and begin to speak to you, I can't communicate that knowing. That knowing must be revealed. That knowing must come to you by revelation. That is what makes it a force. That is what makes it powerful. I can teach you principles of how to yield to the Holy Ghost. But there's a knowing you need to receive that will release the supernatural into your life. And every time you see a deficiency in any believer's Christian life, it is because he lacks a knowing. So Paul diagnosed their condition and said, you guys lack a knowing. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Most High God. If you have that revelation, you are done with fornication. You are done with any kind of immorality that you have to employ your body to use outside of the government of God. You are done with that. Everything and every dimension and level depends upon an additional knowing of revelation. And what the knowing of revelation does is that it gives us insight into that which has already been accomplished in Christ Jesus. And it is that seeing, that revelation... That unveiling that makes that past aspect of Christ in force in your life. As long as you lack that knowledge of revelation, that knowing of revelation, you will be deficient in that area. Is that clear now? The knowing of revelation. For instance, if somebody wants to get baptized in the Holy Spirit, he needs a knowing. And the knowing that the person needs is in the book of John and in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Let me read it. Let's go to John. John 7. John chapter 7 verse 38 and 39. He that believeth on me as the scripture had said, 
out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 39. But this spake he of the spirit which the, there that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now the key to the outpouring of the Spirit is that Jesus must of necessity need to be glorified before the Spirit of God must be outpoured. And just if you are here and you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I recommend to you, you need a knowing of revelation that Jesus has been glorified. Do you get that? Now that's how it is. Those things, those are realities that are established and are accomplished in the spirit realm. But only a knowing of revelation can connect you with your power. So that your faith can be exercised accurately and on the strength of the exercise of that faith, that which has been accomplished in Christ Jesus comes into force in your life and becomes true in your experience. So the, the distance or difference between a man that is insufficient and sufficient is the knowing of revelation. Now everything is possible. Yes, things that are impossible with men are actually possible with God. But the difference between that impossibility and possibility is what? Is the knowing of revelation. The knowing of revelation. Now, I was on campus one day and God spoke to me and said I should go to a certain city. I delayed for three days and after three days, uh, the Holy Ghost, the hand of the Holy Spirit was so heavy upon me, so much so that I had to leave my lecture room board the bus to that city when i got to that city to cut the long story short there was a dead person that needed to be raised uh, because i felt that if god says i should go and help this person and upon arriving there the person that i was supposed to come and help just lost his mother and that is his problem it means that god wants to raise the dead although it was not something that i could conclude logically until i went into my room to pray and I went into the room. There's a room I normally stay when I come to that elder's house. That's where I fast those days. And upon praying, I came out and told the elder, your, your mother lives. Why? Because I had a knowing of revelation. Your mother lives. And suddenly, the guy that came brought news from the village that the woman was dead. Said she died. I, she died. And so there were two perspectives. Either for the man to believe that her mother lives, his mother lives, or for him to believe the messenger that came from the village that said the woman is dead. The controversy became heated. And I decided that, well, I finished my mission, let me go back to school because I left school to come bring you message, a message of glad tidings and you do not believe my words. The man said, I, he doesn't believe and he doesn't disbelieve. But the only thing is that we let us go to the village together. Me, I'm an ambassador of life. This one brought the message of death. Let's just go. And we all, after a long argument and all of that, I decided, okay, let's go. Now, by the time we got into the village, some meters away from the house, the entire village was gathered in front of that house. So I now came into the flesh. You see, there is a soul. This soul does not go to sleep. It's not the soul that is crucified. It's the life of the soul. So the soul is still active because you need the soul. And what God does in transformation and confirmation is that he wants to bring your soul in alignment with your spirit. So that when the spirit of God is speaking, your soul is available to receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost to enlarge that which is being received in the spirit. Now, do you understand what I mean by that? <laughs> the soul is a place of enlargement. God drops a perspective, drops an inspiration. And then by the same anointing of the Holy Spirit, it begins to enlarge. Depth begins to come. Deeper understanding. So now, so the soul is supposed to be the place of enlargement. And the soul cannot operate independently. It was not an independent organ. It was supposed to be a dependent organ that receives what it transmits, what it develops. Are you with me? But you see, in the fall, the soul became independent, self-sufficient, and man was sentenced to live by it. But you see, spirit life is something that we must keep at and work at and keep on practicing and keep on perfecting so that we can consistently learn how to walk in obedience with the spirit of god now when i came to the village uh, 
there was a crowd outside. Then I now reasoned in myself in the flesh. Um, if this woman didn't die, why are these people here? Are you with me? I hope you can understand that. That I moved out. That's how easy it is to move out of the path of spiritual progress. Just a thought. Just a perspective. Just a philosophy. Can move you out of the path. And you not even know. You see speaking tongues and all of that. But there was an obedience you were supposed to carry out. Which you failed to carry out. And is, you have not confessed it. So you are stunted. You don't know. And when we came out. Somehow I don't understand their language. So the man came out of the car. The ambassador that brought the message of death was there. And I was also there. The only disadvantage I had was two of them understand the language and I did not. So when we came out. Outside of the house, some people came to the man and began to speak to the man, spoke, spoke to the man in his language. Instead of him to interpret, they didn't interpret. So we left outside, came inside. Women were sitting in the sitting room. They spoke, spoke, spoke. No interpretation. Ah, the thing was downing. You see, because I tuned to the soul, there were feelings that came that was as though it was confirming the fact. That the perspective of the soul was correct. There were expressions on the faces of people that gave muscle to the perspective of the soul. The way they spoke, you would think, I, I miss it this time. In fact, by the time we left the parlor, the sitting room to go deeper inside, I'd already sought for a scripture that I will use just in case the old man is dead. And the one that came was, She's not dead, she's only sleeping. Then I teach a message on the sleep of the saints. I, I was ready. But the more we went, the more I fell out of the spirit. The more we went, the more I fell out of the spirit. But the excellency of faith is that even in the midst of doubt, it triumphs. By the time we got to the final room, because from the sitting room, we now entered another room, elders, old men with white hair and stick. They were there and they spoke. they spoke. Instead of this man to be interpreting, they didn't have. Until we went entered the last room, the woman that was dead was sitting on the bed. The, the, man that, the person that almost died was the man that brought the message. The, he was dead. <laughs> the person that said died was alive. Now we had a problem because the one that wanted to die now is the one that brought the message. What happened? They said she died for eight hours. She revived that time I went to pray in the room. Now, the point is, the fact that I felt that it was wrong, was it wrong? What I did was that I left the sphere of that reality and began to seek evidence from another realm. That's what the average believer does. Whenever he is faced with challenges and situations, he moves from the realm of his defense and the Bible says that everyone that observes lying vanities has forsaken his mercy. The woman was alive. And when I came out from her room and I came outside, my God, the man now began to share the testimony of how God sent me from campus to come and tell him that God has sent me to help you. And when he said the matter on ground, he thought that I could not help him. And he, this student requested that I should tell him what happened. And I said, my mother died. He prayed for one hour and came out of the room and said, she lives. The whole village heard the story. And that was the first time I preached open air. And see, it was easy for miracle to take place. Because there was, they believed that the dead had been raised from the dead. Now, apart from all of that that happened that day, I left home with a, lesson, with, with a great lesson. I went home with a great lesson. The lesson I went home with was that, you see, when God, God, do you know, after God gave me that knowing of revelation, he didn't give me any additional support knowing. He left me to myself, whether or not I will stick with him, or whether or not 
I will align with the evidences that was coming from the realm of the soul that was contrary to the voice of God. He didn't do anything to support that perspective. You know why? He doesn't need truth is truth in the night in Afghanistan and in Iraq. So if it's spoken, that is how it is. It's left for you to believe it. It's left for you to doubt it. Then that was a major thrust. That experience was a major thrust on my work with God. From that day, I felt how foolish it was for me to doubt God when the knowing of revelation had come. So whenever you find insufficiency, incapacity, and all the limitations of humanity, those are things that are specialties of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not man. And so when we have limitations, when we have situations that humanity cannot solve, it's a good time to engage the Holy Spirit. And all you need is the knowing of what? Of revelation. If you are still with me, say, Amen. There is a difference between the written word of God and the living word of God. Now what I mean by the living word of God is that word that God speaks to your heart directly. That one is alive. It, it surges with power. When you meditate upon it, it surges with power and God begins to enlarge it in your soul. Are you still with me? Surges with so much power. It's living, it's alive. Now there's a difference between that word and the word that is written in the pages of the Bible. What is the difference? And what is the link from the written word to the living word? The word that is written in the Bible is dead. Written on the pages of the book is dead. If you lift it out of the pages of the book and you want to obey it that way, you will not have any power with which to perfect it. Are you with me? Okay, let me explain that. Some people went to, they did seven days fasting. And they read from the Bible that Jesus walked on water and they wanted to practicalize it after seven days of fasting they jumped into the lagoon and seven of them died they were acting on the logos on the written word it had not become a living word in them so it was not forceful and because it was not forceful God was not under obligation to defend it they were on their own it was dead Did you get that? You, are not, you, you, you didn't get that so a theologian goes to Bible school and he studies for four years and he comes out. What he has studied is dead. It's logos. It's only when you have vital connection with the spirit of life himself and he speaks to you directly. That one is alive and he surges with power within your heart. It burns with power. It burns with might. And in the soul, the anointing of God begins to enlarge it. Before I preach here, he preaches to me first. For many days as I'm meditating upon it, he begins, he begins to enlarge. That's where the scriptures come out, the sequence of scriptures. The sequence of scriptures doesn't come from a concordance. The sequence of scriptures to use in my own practice of ministry comes from as the living word of God enlarges in my soul. Sometimes it takes 14 days for the enlargement to be accomplished in full scope so that I can understand the sequence of delivery. And I'm following, as I'm following that sequence of delivery, the, the power of God begins to surge. The same power that was locked in my heart begins to surge in the environment. Living word of God. The difference between the living word of God and the written word of God is what we call the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And so what you need to pray for is for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's the spirit of wisdom and revelation that brings the knowing of revelation. When the efficient believers gave their life to Christ, Paul said, I began an intercessory session because of you guys. And one of my prayer points was that through the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, is the spirit of wisdom and revelation that furnishes the knowledge of Christ. And is that knowing of revelation that is the first point on our path of spiritual progress. And the truth of the matter is this. If you have not been receiving the knowings of revelation, it means that you are not spiritually healthy. Because the knowing of revelation is one of the signs of spiritual health. A time came 
I, because for 15 years I sat in the office of a teacher and I taught and taught. I said, no, this is not, this is not how the apostles did it. The apostles would teach and there were signs and wonders that accompanied their teaching. It means I'm something short of what, what the expectation of scriptures is. And I began to pray and began to fast. And what God does in such cases gives you a knowing of revelation. That knowing of revelation is an operation of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that connects you with a revelation of one of the realities in Christ Jesus that is available for you. That you are not seeing because you don't have a revelation about. And once you see it, it becomes in force. That is what no one can ever take away. Even though your coat of many colors can be take, taken away, but that which you have received by the knowing of revelation is yours forever. Do you get it? I, we, did, we prayed in Lagos one time, and uh, I told my wife, they are going to steal our cow. The way I saw this thing, Kai, our car will go. She said, what? Well, two days later, they stole our car. When I prayed, and I knew that, you know, God loves me so much. He knows that the disaster is coming. He prepared my heart. He said, Just be, be aware that this one is going. So, and I've, in working with God, experience, experience has taught me that if God makes a statement like that, it means that there's a deliverance that God wants to bring into my life. That is why he will allow this. So I don't ask him why. That's why I knew that. So when they took the car and I was told, I said, right, no problem, let's sleep, let's sleep. Tomorrow when we wake up, we'll analyze the impact of this theft. So we went and slept. And then when we woke up the next day and I say it is proclaimed from now henceforth, nobody should discuss about that car again. Hallelujah. And that was all. Because before I had a car, I was good. I was okay. I was bubbling. I didn't mind hopping on bikes and moving with public transport. So nothing changed. The sense of your being is not changed because of anything material. If it is true that you have found security in God. Are you with me? Oh, you are not with me. You see, it's a glorious life. It's something that somebody doesn't have the ability to make you feel bad. A thief, your boss. Oh my God, I exist in Christ without you. I'm bubbling without you. My destiny was written and it was not attached to yours. So you cannot pray. No man can receive anything except to be given to him from above. Now, God made you AGM now. Enjoy your time. But there's nothing you can do that can affect my security. Because my security is hinged upon the knowing of revelation that I've received in Christ. You can't touch it. So there's nothing a man can do to you actually. That's the truth. Nothing. Because if you have found security in Christ through the knowing of revelation, you live from that knowing. That becomes the, the perspective of your security on the inside. Not substance, not cars, not that. And after 14 days, the Lord came back and said, Okay, because you did not feel the car was anything when it left. Obvious. Then Anand required, discovered it was a test. The devil went to heaven to brag and said, Alright, let's take his car and see if this is loyalty is true. Because the devil doesn't know you. Doesn't know what goes on in your heart. He doesn't know how far you have gone with God. So he accuses you even in... You have left that realm since. He said, no, the way I'm seeing him. That is still there. Let's take the car. And God allows it. But he informed you. Your car will go. That means don't pray about it. <laughs> Just pray for something else. The car, it will go. <laughs> Hallelujah. 14 days later, I came back and said, because when they took the car, you didn't even... So it means the argument has been resolved and concluded. I will give you this kind of car. But I didn't request for it. That's how it happens for true kingdom people. God adds to you even before, I mean this natural thing, money and car, just be aligned. And I assure you when you become consecrated to serve the will of God, one of the first things God will do is not car. It's not material. Because he knows that if you have come to a point where you have found security in God, 
it is easier for you to trust the voice of God when you hear it, you depend on it. That's the life of the Spirit. Because that voice comes with a technology from the realm of God. There is no way your mind can function and give you that kind of instruction. It is a technology that is reserved with the Spirit of God. And it's on the strength of our partaking of those and yielding to those perspectives that we stay ahead of the devil. We have worked for many years like this as if there was no devil. The truth is this. If we grow in the things of God, it will look more and more as if there is no devil. You know why? You don't know why? Now, this is where we are in the spirit realm. And you need a knowing of revelation to see that. When Paul was saying that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms, far above principalities and power, you need a knowing of revelation to see that. It's not something that you can, you can envisage naturally. Now, Jesus died, okay? He was buried, okay? After three days, the Spirit of God went and picked him out of the land of the dead, resurrected him. He appeared to his witnesses. He ascended before their eyes. And in the book of Philippians chapter 2, he, was, he didn't only arrive at heaven, he was coronated as the Christ. Do you understand? And then that's the seat that God has brought us to sit. That means we have, gone be, we have gone into death, burial, we have risen with him. Do you understand? I hope you know that it is because Jesus rose that we have the hope of the newness of life. Oh, you are not with me. You see, the implication of that is that the, the power and the resource with which you live this new life is a, is a resource and a power that is superior to death. Death could not hold it. And the strongest element of the old creation actually is death. That is the threat that the devil had for all people that were under that creation. And the life with which you started, having risen with Christ, is that life that is superior to death. We know Jesus as the life, but we don't know him as the resurrection. Because it's Jesus as the resurrection that is the power base upon which your Christian life is based. Nothing of death, nothing of the old creation can subdue what you have. Now, when Jesus resurrected, he did not only re resurrect, he ascended. When he ascended, he did not only ascend, he was coronated. And he was given a throne in the heavens. That is the throne that we share with him as joint heads. Are you here? It was when Jesus sat upon that throne that the Holy Ghost left heaven to assist us on earth. Listen to me. Every time we operate on earth with the power of the Holy Spirit, we operate from that throne. And that throne is beyond the grave. That throne is beyond Satan. If you operate from the anointing, you will see the throne manifesting through the anointing. And the defeat of Satan will become obvious wherever that anointing that came from that throne is present. You know, is, that some, is that too difficult? Moving that anointing, you are operating from the throne and it's superior to Satan and death. And you will see the demons will scream. You will see the sick will be healed. You will see power will manifest because you are operating from a realm that is beyond the oppression of the devil. But the devil will do everything to make sure you don't operate from that throne. He keeps you in the soul. He keeps you in insecurity. You are not sure because you don't have a knowing. Meanwhile, Jesus was not afraid of death because he knew that he had come from God and he was going back to God. It was a knowing of revelation that, that made Jesus steadfast. What do you know? Paul said, I know him whom I believed. You, what do you know? If you don't know anything, you'll be tossed to and fro, fro like, 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 like chaff. And that's the fate of many Christians these days. There's no anchor. There's no root. There's no depth. Because there's no knowing. That's the first point on the path of spiritual progress. The knowing of revelation. Very fundamental. And remember, they can take away the coat of many colors. Your husband can take his bag and pack out. Many things can happen to you. But there's something no one can ever take away that which you were given by the Holy Ghost. It was that knowing that Peter had. And when he beheld that man at the gate beautiful, he knew he had something with God. And he said unto him, silver and gold we do not have. 
but such as we have with God, we give you. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He knew he had something with God. Notice that he didn't go into tongues. Bada, bada, bada. No, no, no. He knew. It's just like when you finish secondary school and you got your certificate. Are you with me? You got your certificate. And then somebody that has seen you for a long time and lost contact with you now showed up. I said, ah, are you still in school? The fact that the person didn't know you have the certificate didn't change it. You have certificate. Now, and there is nothing, no feeling on your body to show that you have a certificate. You just know. You just know you have it. Now, knowings are not feelings. Knowings are, is, a knowing is an anchor that stabilizes your, your restive soul. It captures it and your soul is at rest. Because there's a knowing. The cure to the instability of the soul is the knowing of revelation. When you see a man that easily afraid, easily worries, he, those are symptoms of the manifestation of the fact that he has not received a knowing from God. Or if he has received, he has cast away his confidence. And so it's like somebody that has not yet received. Long time ago, God spoke to me. He said, this is my covenant with you. I place my words in your mouth. And in the mouth of thy seed, and in the mouth of thy seed, seed. So I knew that God had raised my line as a people that will be given to the word of God. That in all nations, among all people, white, black, or gray, the word of God for them will come because of that covenant. I know I have that covenant. Are you with me? One day, I was to go minister somewhere. I was dirty because we had waited for so long. I, I was not looking too good. And when I got there, as my custom is, if it is the time for the meeting, and I get there that time, we'll go straight for the meeting. So when I got there, and they said, okay, the preacher is here, and they invited me, I was not looking like a preacher. And the guys were actually high society guys, powerful guys, lecturers, learned people, and they looked upon this preacher, and they felt the pastor was insulting them by bringing this kind of preacher. But you see, their perspective did not affect my knowing. Hey, Yabola. <laughs> Mama la ba, ba, ba. I knew by whose mandate I was standing. I knew the kind of anointing that I operate in. I knew the name of the God that I subscribed to. And five minutes into the service. You know, when they belittle you like that, God becomes, mm, he enlarges himself. The revelations that came. Mama, mama, mama. Jesus, it came out of a knowing. In five minutes, in 15 minutes, the place had changed. In 45 minutes, the anointing of God had broken into the crowd. I was still preaching and God was walking. By the time we got to one hour and my time was, was up, I wanted to give the, the mic. The person I should give the mic to was, was under the power. And when I, when I now dropped the mic and left the place, the person, somebody came to speak on the altar. He came to speak and began to speak nonsense. Speak, and then just realized that, hey, what have I been? Then he had to drop the mic and he sat down. We sat down in the, God was moving, was moving. For 30 minutes, nobody could stand there behind the pulpit. Uh, so the thing now moved beyond the way I look. So what exactly does he know? The, the, the measure of a man is not his looks, man. The knowing of revelation. That's the difference between a champion and a charlatan. The knowing of revelation. You might have biceps and triceps. If you don't have knowing of revelation, you can die on market day. God give you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. The knowing of revelation. Now, see, Paul says, I know whom I believe. Now, what do you know? Please help me ask your neighbor, what do you know? Because if you don't have the knowledge of that which has come to you by revelation, you are not ready for this world at this time. It has become hostile. Darkness is no longer hiding in the creeks. Darkness has come into the main town. There are books now that are written. Witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft people. Technocrats in the way of witchcraft are now writing books, spreading the principle. Now, you know, do you know that if you apply a principle, every principle is traceable to a spirit. Every principle. Yes. So some technocrats in the way of witchcraft came together and they wrote the 48 laws of power. How to advance an organization with principles of darkness. And they wrote it at the back that the book was an amoral book. 
that is a book that doesn't subscribe to morality and righteousness. These principles do not come from righteousness. Do not come from morality. They come from somewhere else. And then it is, it is terrible. When a pastor goes and buys that book and begins to use the book as the means to advance his ministry work. He claims that he's serving Jesus using principles of the devil to run a platform where Jesus is to be served. Now there's so much ignorance widespread in the body of Christ. And because of that, Satan has taken over several pulpits. Satan has influenced several structures that would have been revival centers. You will go out to borrow things when you don't know yourself, the God that you are called to serve. After that meeting, the counseling line was long the next day. The next day I dressed well. But even though I changed my dress code the next day, the knowing they had about me was beyond everything I could wear. It's not about your bow tie or your slick shirt or your electric suit. What do you know? Paul said, I know him whom I believe. Have you ever been in a plane that's about to crash? Then we'll know what you know. I was asleep. And the man by my side was wondering, how can you sleep in such circumstances? So I saw a vision of myself on land. You can die, but I'll be there. <laughs> in Kano, I was on a bike, and a man was driving. We almost had three accidents. And I touched him. I said, hey, you driver, you see me? I have seen myself at 79. But I don't know about you. He, he, he drove away from that point. He, he, he comported himself because he was not sure of the next day. I have seen 79. What do you know? That's the first point on the path of spiritual progress. If we want to leave religion and step into the main arena where we get to work with God, then these factors cannot be ignored. What do you know? Many years ago, we were still students then in the university. I was in Otupo prayer, praying and fasting and God told me that the revelation that I was running with was going to be relevant in the next 10 years. I was a success, prosperity, and a motivational preacher. I was good at motivation. I could make somebody that was willing to die to live for one more day and see the sun arise. I knew how to pull the strings of the soul and give you hope even when there's no hope. And I thought that was preaching. Until the Lord came and said, young man, where you are going you see you cannot be on the wrong road and arrive at the right place then thank god for watchman knee as i read his books and i saw the center and the circumference of the economy of god i had to start on learning what i learned from bible school to begin to learn the way of god but then i was already reputed as a great preacher i had itinerary i had preaching engagements to preach what i learned from bible school so in order to deliver my soul from the whole process, I had to shut down preaching. Because the old stock is expired. The expired date has come upon it. Now let's learn the law. And that was the greatest decision that I took in my life. You might be here today and maybe you are a theologian. You have built a philosophy along the path of death and the logo. We have seen the new and the living way. And it will not be such a price for you to abandon that pathway to seek the excellent pathway that the apostles and the great our uh, great founding fathers have established the witness that their lives and their ministries have established i'm going to stop here now so that we can continue in the evening hallelujah there's so much for us to do we might need two months to finish it might need two months to finish it because there are eight points eight bus stops on the path of spiritual progress and all the ailments of your christian life can be solved because the book of Romans is a map. It's a map that shows us the process and the destination. It gives us um, an idea of the syllabus of the Christian faith and what God wants to achieve. He also reveals your own present position and what you need to do to come out of your predicament. It's very easy for you to veer off from the path of spiritual progress. And so this weekend is dedicated to recovery. So that everyone can receive sufficient discernment required for him to walk that path 
and to walk it until he sees the light of the Lord Jesus Christ and the light of his countenance shine upon him. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we are going to pray. I would like you to rise. <laughs> Amen. So just like we said, we'll use two days for theory, one night, Sunday night, for practicals. Two days for theory, Sunday night for practical. Then you learn in the practical class uh, how to respond to your spiritual senses. And you must be taught how to respond to your spiritual senses. Even though you were not taught how to respond to your natural senses, you must be taught how to trust your spiritual senses. How many of you have been tempted before? You were tempted and you knew something was drawing you to do something. Okay, let's do it the other way. Some people are not raising their hand. It means some have not been tempted. How many of you have not been tempted before? You were never tempted. You never felt a compelling power. Now, do you know what? If you have ever been tempted before, it means that you have spiritual senses because it was those your senses that the devil exploited in tempting you. You realize that because of our orientation and configuration, it's easier for us to hear the voice of the devil than it is for the voice of God. It's the voice of the devil that comes through the temptations that we experience. And we are more inclined to understanding what the temptations require from us than what God requires from us by his spirit. Hallelujah. But you see, if we are going to go into perfection, just like our sister showed us, I know you were pressed for time and it was not sufficient time for you. But we'll be doing this throughout this year. And while I was sitting, when you were teaching, uh, God began to speak to me and he said that we should dedicate the book, uh, month of September, to do a feast. A feast of the world. A feast. Now, what we'll do in the month of September, please remind me, we are going to summarize the Bible. I don't know, but in my own study of the Bible, I'm more drawn to the New Testament than the Old now. It might be wrong, but I've been in the New Testament for like 10 years now. So maybe I'm better in the New Testament than in the Old. Because I, I, left, I said, let's understand these things. So I've been in the New Testament for over 10 years. All right? I want to do a feast of the world. We are going to summarize every book of the Bible. Now, every book has its message, for God's sake. <laughs> there is something the book is talking about. We'll find out what exactly is this book talking about. Meanwhile, every book of the Bible that you read, even though it has its own message, it is pointing to one thing. And we are going to show you the connection of every book and now it sums up to the last book. And if God gives us insight, we will dwell on one subsequently. But the feast of the world in the month of September. Let us go into this Bible. From what I saw in the little Bible study we did, the culture of studying the scriptures is no longer is lost among young people. So we will have to do something deliberate to make up for that 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 deviation. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. If you operate from the throne of God, you operate as if the devil is non-existent. He can be relevant to other people, but not to you. And so when people make pamphlets and spiritual warfare templates, and all they do is bind stuff from morning till night, I wonder what Bible they read. When somebody wakes up and for, the, for 19 years, all his preaching is about breakthrough. You begin to wonder what Bible the person reads. Because if we do not sustain the fact that the goal, the goal of what is written in the scripture is to make us participants of a kingdom that is in the heavens. If we don't see that, then there's no way you can interpret the Bible accurately. And if you have my TV satellite and you watch a wide spectrum of preachers, you begin to see how that Africa is about to be plunged into darkness. Because there's no truth again on air. Now it's easy to preach. When you say, God can do it, you are preaching. We are talking about people that can establish us in the truth of God. They are scarce now. 
if you if you think that the christianity is all about okay let's put on hair tie and don't wear trousers um make sure you keep your earrings down and by the time you are old you will know you follow the different path because that was not the emphasis of the apostles meanwhile you cannot show me two scriptures in the bible that says if a woman puts on trousers is sin meanwhile we can also establish from the bible that there's something called the attire of the halot the attire of the halot is configured in such a way that it is suggestive and seductive even when that attire was described in scripture a code was not born out of the attire it's just the philosophy of the attire it is seductive and what it is seductive and what suggestive are you with me there is every need for us to be accurate because there are some people that want to prey upon our ignorance now and i believe that one of the reasons why this altar was raised was to challenge false perspective that will have the, that intent to throw the younger generation seeking for god into religion and to cut them off from the path of spiritual progress for this we must fight for this we must contend so that the highway of god of the spirit can still be accessible to all that call upon his name so many things out there but we need to find the path of spiritual progress are you with me do you feel what i say there is a great destiny that god wants to achieve with every young man here every young woman and we must know the path by which we can lay hold of christ unlearned fishermen were able to gain mastery in these things and what resulted out of their lives was something that even caesar could not account for rattled the foundation of cities penetrated difficult places so much so that even in babylon a church was planted and when greetings were sent to the churches the church in babylon was remembered we can penetrate everywhere if we operate in the spirit of our fathers the time has come for the fullness of all things and the god of heaven wants to be revealed to his people and you will be his messenger you will be his prophet you will be the one that will herald his glory can we pray and say lord give me grace to obey you the simplicity of your voice as it precipitates upon my heart as you call me to incline my ear as you call me to align give me grace that i will follow you that i will desire your reality like the fountain that comes from the water brooks give me grace and i might know your will and walk therein we call upon you our generation seeks you our generation calls upon you we want to know that indeed you will look upon us and say behold my people behold my people he calls you he calls your name he calls you he can take your life and forge something powerful out of it. He calls you, trying to catch your attention so that you not look upon the former things and the failures of the past, but that your heart will rejoice in the possibilities that are yet to come in your future. He calls you. Amara 
Santa Babori Mala de Breketani Mala Prescova Rahenda de Boria Mama Santa Lahahata Mirasom de Brahalabana Mabra Santa Baboria Hasela Hinde Miraho Sabre Lohombe Mabra Katebo Boria Masa you will be that prophet that will take the glory of the Lord into your family. You will be that prophet that will pioneer something that never happened before. Everybody was a polygamist. Everyone had to lay hand upon another woman. But you will begin a line, a path that has never been among your people. There were so many things that took place. So many patterns that were seen. But your order will be a new order a order that will establish a new path a path wherein righteousness will reign he calls you upon it the fat places upon it has been plundered our people walk on food even though they were destined to ride on horseback the devil had gained mastery of our people so we call upon your name that you will set foot upon our land set foot in our families set foot among our people let our borders be preserved. Let the causes that run through our bloodlines be broken. Let the limitations of our ancestral line be stopped. That they will grant unto us grace to mount up with wings like eagles. To reach into the heights of the heavens. To reach even into the tabernacle of the Most High. That we might find strength by your spirit to conquer the sins of our ancestors the limitations and weakness of them so that they will not replay in our lives we seek to go beyond the limits that to our soul God, a new order a new people will be forged and formed a new tribe in the kingdom of God oh it is written that the spirit of the Lord help better infirmities thou spirit of God thou spirit of God Help thou, 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 help thou our infirmities. That a new generation of men, a new generation of women might arise amidst us. A new breed without breed, a radical opposition against unrighteousness. Men that fear God and hate sin. Oh God, we call upon you. Quicken us and we shall call upon thy name. Aberene Satama, Proske Sosena Ilabara, Mokra Sate Koria Mama, Hebromera Casca Zazile. Aha, aha, grant, O oh God, that even the least among us will become as strong as David. That Lord, you will activate the ancient covenants that you made with the forefathers, that you will look upon us with mercy, that the mighty, the strong, the wise will yet arise from amidst us people with the grace to bring about an end to the circles of darkness to bring about an end to the invasion of the kingdom of darkness oh god we call upon you it doesn't matter how many failed in your family it doesn't matter how many heads are bowed down. Behold, behold, the Lord will do a new thing and it shall spring forth. 
it shall spring forth. It shall spring forth. It is normally said, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? But Savior shall come out of Zion. Savior shall come from Zion. faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all these things cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling? And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards world? Who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which was wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places? He said, when I heard of your faith, I could not but see, I could not cease to pray that the eyes that by the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know that ye may know now, those of you on campus, what do you know about your campus? What do you know? Do you know why God founded that campus? What do you know about the location where that campus is sited? You don't know about your city. You don't know about where you dwell. How much of change do you think you can bring without knowing? You have never seen this city from the realm of the spirit. You want to change it. And your, the eyes of your understanding has not been enlightened concerning it. The eyes of your understanding must be enlightened. That he may know. What do you know about my according? What is God's intention about the city? When we don't have revelation, we become insufficient. 
what do you know about yourself? Paul said, I, I know him whom I believe. What do you know about God? Then we are going to adopt Paul's prayer. His prayer was that the eyes of our understanding must be enlightened. That's the only way we can know. Whenever you see a minister of the gospel and you, you envy him, it's because you don't know who you are. You don't need to be like him to be relevant. You don't need to be like him. Yes, you can like, you can learn from him. You can receive from him. But that cannot take the place of knowing who you are in him. That's when you become truly free. When the eyes of your understanding are enlightened that he may know. You might be operating in a place. Maybe the number of people are not growing. But you know why God put you there. People may not be coming. Maybe you are the opener of the shaft. Because of what you are doing, many churches begin to come into the place. And the pastors don't know that it's your work that opened the place. Once you know, you will not have problems. You just be doing your own. A human being may not be able to say, ah, this guy, he may not know why you are there. But you know. The reason why we need, we, we have so many elaborate counseling sessions is because people don't know. We want to pray for the eyes of our understanding to be alive. There are some things that only Jesus can tell you. And we need Jesus to begin to speak to us now. We have been running with duplicates for too long. We need the original. And that's why the eyes of your understanding must be enlightened. If you don't, if you don't know the city, you will not understand the warfare in the city. If you don't know the city, you will not know what the devil is fighting to get. Except the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. You might not know why God has planted you in a place for time. Why he has planted you in an office. Maborasi mamahande. Heaven and earth may pass away. That word that he has spoken to you will never pass away. I know. I know. I know. I know. that is here present that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened in Jesus name now there's a difference between New Testament and Old Testament preaching listen in the New Testament because you have the spirit of God when something is coming from the spirit of God to you what happens to you is that he opens the eyes of your understanding 
your spiritual senses are activated and the eyes of your understanding enlighten then you begin to see some things you did not see before some things begin to open to you that were shocked that is what new testament preaching should do to you it enlightens you as the preacher is preaching the holy ghost tears your spirit and your spiritual senses are activated so that you can begin to see that's what it, it does it goes beyond what the preacher says to enlightenment of eyes the enlightenment of eyes you experience makes what you have received to become your property hallelujah now anytime preaching goes on and your spiritual eyes are not open it's either there's something wrong with you or there's something wrong with the preacher your eyes should it should open sometimes when i sit and the word of god is being ministered i some things just open and i know that those things that have opened they are mine now when you were teaching now yes you taught a lot of things but i saw the power of the blood that was what i saw the power what did you see when you were saying that the equation is not balanced as a chemist man sinned they use a ram's blood so the equation is not balanced And it happens to be that a man sinned, but it was God's blood that they used. So the blood of God, the capacity is much more than the blood of man. And that's why redemption is deeper than the offense that Adam created. The Bible says, because of one man's sin, death came unto all. But it said much more. That is in a greater, it's not equivalent, it's much more. His obedience was not just an antidote for sin. Much more than that, because it was the blood of God. The blood of God and the blood of man. He swallowed everything that the blood of man could speak. He still had capacity. I was seeing the blood there. I was not hearing you anymore, because the spiritual senses were activated. We were speaking from the pot of the spirit, and he stirred my spirit. And then that was going on there. That was going on. Then I now realize how that flesh and blood was weak. To enter into the kingdom of God, it was weak. But upon the altar of incense in the heavens, the blood is still there. But there's one blood that entered. And so when you come into the presence of God, it's not because you were right with God. The only access route into his presence is by the doorway of the blood. And I was wondering, because say we should come to the throne of God. We should come to the new and the living way which God has consecrated for us. The way of the blood. And that's how we will ever come and that's how we will ever stand. It's by that blood. And that blood has gone to shape us. It's the basis of our justification. And justification was required so that God will be righteous in showing us favor. I was seeing the blood. That was what I was seeing. And it was opening up stuff. Hallelujah. Many things were clearing up. I saw a pathway into deeper relationship with God because of that teaching. I saw it. I'm going to exploit it. Now, if the eyes of your understanding are not open and lighted, you will remain where you are. Doing old things. Meanwhile, we need that access to go higher. That's how the spirit life is. Sometimes you need to pray for weeks. You need to pray for months just to get a knowing that I am going to be with you in this time. And then when you rise up, you might see your mates have given you a head start. It doesn't matter. By the time you begin to move in the strength of that wall, you will know that they were the ones that wasted time. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ.